This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So we're going to go through and start to look towards the end of this chapter now and finish off our financial statements by looking at the statements of changes in equity. So what you can see up there is that you've got your pro forma statement of changes in equity. It is something that you've seen previously on financial accounting, although not in huge amounts of detail. So FR financial reporting just pushes it that little bit further. OK, so uh, let's just highlight some of the key points about the statement of changes in equity. It's very literal in terms of its title because it is a statement. So a financial statement that looks at the changes in. Equity. So, so what do we mean? OK, uh, well, if we go back to your statement of financial position, uh, which we looked at a little bit earlier, what we have here now. On our statement of financial position is we have the equity balances. So on equity shares, retained earnings, other components of equity, such as a revaluation, and they are. Our closing figures. So if you like our carry forward figures. So what we're looking at, at a statement of changes in equity is we're looking at how those figures. That we see that. On the statement of financial position have changed since. The start of the year. OK, uh, so when you're heading up your statement of changes in equity, remember it is that. It's telling a story about how things have changed. Uh, so it's there for the year ended at your reporting date. So whether that's December, March, June, September or, or whenever else it may be. OK, so that's all it does. It just tells you a story and it's effectively just taking numbers from where we've seen previously within our accounts to be able to go through there and transfer those numbers. So where it tends to appear in any detail is as a part B or C to, to a longer form question so that you normally get in section C. So maybe you've been asked to prepare a statement of financial position or a statement of profit or loss. And then what you get for maybe three to four marks is going through there and being asked to prepare a statement of changes in equity. So using the numbers that you've already prepared. So the equity from the equity section, the statement of financial position or your profit for the year figure or revaluation surplus or total comprehensive income figure that you've taken from your statement of profit or loss or other comprehensive income. OK, so what you've got to be aware of that the statement of change in equity is an easy financial statement to get marks on. But you've got to be aware that you'll have made mistakes in the earlier parts and you need to transfer those incorrect figures into the wrong place. OK, so what do we mean by that? Uh, well. Your own figures are going to have to come. So OF for own figures are going to have to come there for your retained earnings. So that figure that we're looking at there is your profit for the year. OK, so you're going to go through that. Uh, take your statement of profit or loss. If I can find it, where are we? There we go. Uh, so if we go back to our statement of profit or loss from a little bit earlier on. Uh, we've now got this figure here. Uh, so is it your profit or loss for the period? That figure there is going to go to the statement of changes in equity. OK, your profit or loss for the period, profit for the year. OK. Uh, similarly, other figures that you're going to go through there and take as your own figure will be your revaluation surplus. So here I haven't given the column the title or the components of equity. Uh, we've just given it revaluation surplus. Uh, so when you're looking at your revaluation surplus, the figure that you're looking at here is this one there. OK, where are we? Uh, your gains on your non-current asset revaluation. OK, uh, again, keep it simple. Whatever number you've got, just transfer it across, even if it is wrong. There are other figures that will go into the statement of changes in equity, such as that gain or loss on fair value through other comprehensive income investment. But until we've seen fair value through other comprehensive income investments, we're not going to go through there and touch that just yet. OK, uh, so, yeah, you've now got that revaluation gain that goes in your evaluation surplus column. OK, so you're effectively you're getting one mark for each of those. OK, uh, worst case scenario, half a mark for each. 
Uh, easy mark to go through and get in any question uh, would be your dividends. So that gets the big E and the exclamation mark. Uh, you're normally given your dividend figure. So remember, your dividend is a distribution of earnings. So it is reducing your retained earnings. If you put your retained earnings figure in and your dividend, if the profit isn't positive or if the dividend isn't negative, you're going to lose the marks. Why you'd put a profit figure in negative, I don't know. But we do see people put the dividend figure in and forget to put it in brackets. If you don't put it in brackets, oh, disaster. Okay, that flutters away. There they go. Those nice, easy marks. Okay, and all of a sudden, by putting in your profit figure, by putting in your evaluation gain, by putting in your dividend, way we've passed the question. Okay, nice and simple, isn't it? There are other bits that tend to be maybe a little bit more challenging, uh, sometimes because of the way the question is phrased, but you'll see that as you work through questions and past exam questions. Uh, you've got the, is it the issue of your share capital? So remember when you're issuing shares as a rights issue, you debit bank here, you then credit Share capital, uh, so increasing the number of equity shares at par value. And don't forget as well, uh, if you've gone through there and issued it above its par value, there will be a credit to share premium and you can put in a share premium column if you so wish. Or if you wanted, you could group together the share premium revaluation surplus and have it as an other component of equity. It's entirely up to you. Okay. Uh, what I think is maybe just a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging. Uh, keep an eye out for it in exam questions. It doesn't crop up very often, but when it does, because we don't see it so regularly, you're just a little bit unsure on how to do it. Hence, it's quite hard. Uh, if they give you the figure, it's a little bit easier in terms of what the prior year error was. Uh, but if they don't, you've got to calculate it. Oh boy, oh boy. Stay clear. Okay. Uh, but what happens there is if we're looking, is it at IAS 8? Uh, IS8 deals with accounting policies, uh, change in accounting policies, accounting estimates, and your errors. So if there is a change in policy or a change in error, we need to go back and restate the prior year figures, which you will talk about and see in a later session. Once you've restated the prior year figures, that will then result potentially in a change to your profits. That change to profits, therefore, changes last year's retained earnings. You reported last year's retained earnings and they are now going to therefore be different as an opening figure because you've made the adjustments. OK, uh, so you then need to adjust those retained earnings, either increasing them or decreasing them. Remember, if you're decreasing them, put them in the brackets. OK, there we go. So you can pass these questions pretty straightforwardly. OK, uh, however, you do need to make sure there that you use your own figures and find the easy marks. It's obviously not always going to go through and turn up within a longer question. Uh, it could be within a multiple choice question. So here, this one is asking which of the following should appear in the company statement of changes in equity. What will you have your pro forma there? What appears? What doesn't appear? Uh, well, total comprehensive income for the year. Yes. You know, you're putting in your profit figure, your evaluation gain. Uh, so that is then your total comprehensive income feeding through the statement of change in equity, uh, the amortization of your capitalized development costs. No, uh, amortization goes through profit or loss. It's the equivalent, isn't it, of depreciation, but for an intangible asset. So that amortization, yes, goes through profit or loss. So impact the profit for the year, but it does not appear in the statement of change in equity, does it? It appears in the statement of profit or loss. Uh, number three. The surplus on revaluation of non-current assets. That's a yes. So it's the one and three. Is that the C? Okay. If in doubt, guess answer C. Okay, there we go. So that's a brief overview of what the statement of changes in equity looks like. That's a quick overview of well as a, as a section A type question uh, that you could get. In the next video, we're going to go through there and look at a longer example. So I'll see you all very shortly.